nine, Hawaii. Hawaii and Hunter, we are acquitted and we have a moon letter on you. Uh, Roger, were you with me on the mark? We're right on. Roger. Did you have an auto retro? Yes. And the auto cars are fast on the Houston. Uh, now, 296 aft, four right, one, two, five down. Uh, Roger, your attitude's normal. Right on the moon. They did have an automatic retrofire, meaning that the equipment uh, worked as planned. Everything had been fed into the computer, and retrofire should have come precisely on the right second, therefore. It was not required to override the automatic equipment and to fire the retro rockets manually. Over the Hawaii station, uh, Dr. Berry Heart scope here is showing Stafford with a heart rate of 80 beats per minute, Cernan's heart 100 beats per minute. He had estimated that the rates might get up to 130, 125 to 130 during retrofire. Of course, we have no valid uh, vital information such as heart rate information by the Canton station. That will have to come later from on board uh, tapes. We'll come back and monitor now for any additional conversation via Hawaii. that voice from Hawaii rather very faintly. We can see the scene on the wasp and perhaps we can pick up Don Blair there. The swim helicopters have just taken off from the after deck of the carrier wasp. That would be number 61, the one that will be expected to do the prime job, commanded by Lieutenant Commander Jerry Perrigan. His co-pilot is Sam Adelot. His winch operator is Seaman Pritchett. Three Frogmen are on board that number 61. They're followed closely by helo number 53. They're no more than 500 feet off the deck right now and flying away. And they have two frogmen on the secondary helo. Behind the first two helos is helicopter number 57, which is going to photograph the entire mission, the recovery of the astronauts Stafford and Cernan. We would also point out that all these helos have two good cameras mounted right at the winch operation station so that as the astronauts are pulled up out of the ocean, you'll get beautiful film of the boys coming right up when you eventually see it at home. That will, this is Don Blair on the flight deck watching the takeoff of the three primary recovery helicopters. That's the WASP, some 345 miles out in the uh, Atlantic Ocean waiting for the uh, return of the Gemini 9, uh, which is now is slowly, over 10 minutes here, here's the Paulini. Uh, Ten minutes since the retrofire maneuver, and Hawaii has loss of signal. The spacecraft has moved south and east of the Hawaii ring. California should acquire at 72 hours and one minute into the flight, about four minutes from now. And we're 23 minutes, 30 seconds away from splash. In the recovery area, two weather reconnaissance aircraft have returned to the carrier WASP. They report no significant weather disturbances in the immediate area. They report a thin overcast uh, at about 2,000 feet and no indication of rain. This is Gemini Control, Houston. Now, on the basis of retrofire information uh, fed through the computers at the Manned Spacecraft Center in Houston, the uh, time of splashdown has again been recalculated, and again, it's about uh, almost uh, back to the nominal plan uh, that was announced earlier this morning. 
They're now at 37 seconds after the hour for splashdown. Uh, five hours ago, they were saying it was going to be 39 seconds after the hour. They moved it back a whole, almost a half a minute on us, and now they've moved it back to the original. 10, oh, uh, 10 o'clock and 37 seconds. 37 seconds after 10. So apparently, uh, Retrofire was just on their original uh, planned times and apparently at the uh, planned uh, uh, impact of those 2,500-pound uh, retrofire thrusters. The spacecraft now midway between Hawaii and the uh, coast of uh, Mexico on this pass across the North American continent is uh, slowing down, dropping down toward the atmosphere. It will uh, hit the atmosphere just about El Paso. Uh, it'll hit the blackout period just south of Houston. Uh, it will uh, come out of the blackout period just about over Cape Kennedy. And then finally the plunge into the Atlantic. Gravity is now the boss. The spacecraft has been slowed down. Uh, the astronauts can control its attitude, its position uh, in its uh, flight down and can, as we suggested earlier, uh, do some guidance of it toward that footprint. But basically, gravity is the boss at the moment. 21 minutes uh, until splashdown as we get these excellent pictures from the carrier WASP. We saw a recovery of Gemini's uh, 6 and 7 uh, from the WASP. Some beautiful pictures then, you recall. These pictures relayed to the early bird satellite uh, hovering out there over the Atlantic and back uh, to uh, relay stations here uh, in the United States and eventually uh, through our CBS facilities to you at home. Occasionally, as uh, the radar above the uh, WASP mast there uh, swings around uh, past our uh, own uh, transmission uh, radar, or transmission beam, you get that little breakup, but it doesn't last for very long like that. Cernan and uh, Stafford have completed another great step in the American space program, despite uh, the disappointments they have had, some disappointments that are going to lead uh, NASA undoubtedly to take a rather hard, long look at uh, some of the equipment apparently being put aboard our spacecraft. As you recall, uh, they first of all had difficulty uh, in their original takeoff date of May 17th, when uh, the Atlas, uh, boosting their Agena target vehicle uh, toward orbit, uh, suddenly had a short circuit, a random failure, as the NASA people called it. It caused one of the engines to turn, to gimbal, a hard over condition, as they say, that plunged the Atlas uh, and its Agena precious pay package back uh, to the Atlantic, and the mission had to be scrubbed at that time. It was scheduled for two weeks later, uh, for May 31st, using a augmented uh, target docking adapter, which uh, had, did not have the capability of uh, uh, movement in space. Uh, uh, that is, uh, did not have its own propulsion system. It could only control its attitude. No basic propulsion system. And that uh, meant uh, that uh, some important parts of the experiments uh, in space and the docking maneuvers and in using these unmanned uh, target vehicles as resupply ships, in a sense, as fuelers out in space, as sources of extra uh, thrust power in their own rockets, well, all of that had to be abandoned. The target adapter went into absolutely perfect orbit. This atlas worked absolutely perfectly, put the ATDA in exactly the 185-mile circuit orbit. Uh, and here's another announcement to Paul Haney. ...to Gemini 9 via California. He says they're beginning to pick up the... time is 72 hours, 2 minutes. So they're beginning to pick up Gemini 9 in California station. And we'll keep uh, listening here for any communications from the spaceship. As you see by our clock, 18 minutes until splashdown. 345 miles east of Cape Kennedy. No additional uh, communication from the spacecraft. We're presently showing an altitude of 80 nautical miles, 80 nautical miles, as it starts its final sweep across the states. It's about uh, 
three and a half minutes away from the atmosphere now. At 400,000 foot level. Which it should reach uh, just around uh, El Paso, a little south of El Paso. 17 minutes and 37 seconds to splash. Townsend keeping uh, our recovery board up to date. Information reaching here on the disposition of the recovery forces. So far, this reentry seems to be nominal, as they say. Retro fire times uh, about uh, as planned. Attitude of the spacecraft, as far as is known, as planned. But no indication uh, to the ground that we have heard from uh, Paul Haney and Mission Control that there. It is not in the position it was supposed to be. Its exact attitude uh, makes a great deal of difference in this trajectory uh, to the landing spot. If it is tilted up too high, tilted down too low, when those retro rockets fire with the considerable boost that they uh, give the spacecraft, the braking boost, it makes a difference as to what path it then follows down into the atmosphere and it can put the landing site uh, considerably off. This is Gemini Control Houston. We have some uh, minor revisions on our, some of our events to come here. The blackout period now is estimated to begin at 22 minutes and one second after retro fire. We presently show 18 minutes and eight seconds. The next event is the end of blackout, 27 minutes and seven seconds after retro fire. The drogue chute should deploy at 28 minutes, 43 seconds. The main chute at 30 minutes and eight seconds, three zero minutes, zero eight seconds. Splash still predicted for 34 minutes, 21 seconds. Perhaps there, perhaps this return trajectory is not uh, quite as nominal. Uh, that is as planned. Neil Armstrong, our capsule communicator on this shift, is uh, advising Gene Cernan of the times that I just relayed to you. Present altitude uh, 60 miles. Spacecraft coming across the White Sands area. The change in the blackout, uh, beginning of the blackout period, uh, from 18 minutes after retrofire to 22 minutes after retrofire, a four minute uh, change in that would indicate that they're on a much shallower trajectory than uh, had been anticipated. And the WASP has suddenly gone to full uh, speed, we understand, uh, on a heading almost uh, due south. She was uh, within a couple of miles of the planned landing area. She's heading due south at 22 knots, uh, which would indicate that uh, perhaps uh, the reentry trajectory is uh, somewhat off. That and this uh, extra four minutes until blackout begins. The spacecraft now is slightly below 400,000 feet. That means it's re-entered the atmosphere. We're 20 minutes and 15 seconds after retro fire. About one, one and a half minutes from now, we should begin the blackout period. Well, now that doesn't jive with what we got a moment ago from Mr. Haney. We begin the blackout period a minute and a half from now. That's 18 minutes again. That's exactly what they said it was going to be originally before he changed it to 22. Stafford advises he is rolling the left 50 degrees. This will be followed by a roll right maneuver to 38 degrees. These are part of the, the use of the lift factor of the Gemini spacecraft, these rolling maneuvers, putting that off-center heat shield 
in a position to gain the greatest amount of lift, either to the right or the left, as they desire to straighten it out and try to put it down that smokestack of the wasp. They're coming up on the uh, begin blackout period at 22 minutes and one second. We presently show 21 minutes, 30 seconds since retro fire. That's back to the uh, second figure we're given, 22 minutes blackout beginning. 